Welcome to Greg Hansen's video notebook. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley here with Greg Hansen. Greg, it is football season. Despite all the basketball we talked about in the last week, it is football season. Arizona's coming off a of bye. The Wildcats travel to Colorado this week. Uh, what are you expecting from that trip to Boulder? I watched the Colorado UCLA game last week. Mm -hmm. Colorado is really tough. Yeah. Physically tough. Mm -hmm. They are good. Yeah. If Arizona wins that game up there, everything will change mm -hmm. because it, to me, it would mean they're good enough to win two or three more. Right. If you and it's a little bit of a hostile environment. I mean, the crowd's not yeah. great, but you're playing at elevation. You're playing maybe in the cold. Uh, this is not just like heading up the road to play ASU or, or playing, uh, you know, UCLA. There's some atmosphere here. Plus, they were winners last year, and I think that still prevails in their system. They think they're winners. Right. They play as winners. They, they came this close to beating UCLA at UCLA, mm -hmm. and we both know UCLA has the personnel to match almost anybody. Right. It, to me, they have always been a football school. Uh, even when they weren't, they were. You know, uh, Is that part of it? Is it part of it that football has seemingly always been an athletic department priority at Colorado? Yeah, but their fans have been slow to come back. Even last year when they won the South Division, mm -hmm. you know, they struggled to sell out. They would get 42, 44,000. Mm -hmm. right. They hold 51. I bet this week they have 42 or so. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a football town mm -hmm. at all. Okay. I think it's a Broncos town. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And, it's a skiing um, town. Yeah. And it's a beautiful town. Yeah. And it's kind of become a basketball school of late. Mm hmm even though they're not that good. Even though they're not that good. Is it as simple to say that for Arizona, this comes down to quarterbacks and coaching? I think it comes down to quarterbacks 100%, don't you? Probably, yeah. I mean, who plays the best, Montez mm -hmm. or Brandon Dawkins? Right. Wins the game, I think. Right. All right. And if Dawkins does not play well with an extra week of health out of Khalil Tate, with an extra week of practices out of Rhett Rodriguez, you would think Rich Rodriguez is in a better position to replace the starting quarterback than he was two weeks ago. <clears throat> But what would Khalil Tate be able to do? Would he be able to complete a pass in the clutch? Right. The problem is not running, which Khalil Tate does great. Yeah. It's, Brandon Dawkins does that as well as anybody in the country. It's it's completing passes. If Brandon Dawkins plays well, Arizona can, can hang with everybody in the league, I think. Right. What can we expect, though? I mean, you can't expect him to show up and be Joe Montana after no. after nine practices between games. But, but what can he do to, to sort of clean it up? He's just got to be more accurate and make better decisions passing. I mean, I hate talking about that. It's, I mean, it's just everybody's beating us to death. Right. But that's what it is. Right. Because they have a good running game. Their offensive line is okay. Right. Defense has been better than expected. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got to execute late in the game. And they would have beat Houston and Utah. They'd be 4-0. They might even be ranked in a top 25. Right. Um, but if you look at it, the two teams they beat have let their coaches go. Yeah. <laughs> so... People look at it in a negative sense. Yep. UTEP, I'm going to go off, off to the side here just for a minute. UTEP replaced its coach with Mike Price. That would be like Arizona replacing Rich Rodriguez with Dick Tomey yeah, for, for eight games. Is that, does it matter who your acting head coach no. is? Because to me, this seems different from the norm. Do you remember even who Arizona's interim coach was when John Makovic was fired? Mike Hankwitz, but yeah. they kind of pay me to know this yeah. stuff. You know. But who else remembers that? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, UTEP's <laughs> going to go on 12. Right, right. And Mike Price, is 71, I think, mm -hmm. who got the most out of UTEP in like the nine years he was there. Right. Um, he's just caretaking, and they're going to be awful, and it's going to UTEP's going to continue to be awful. Is there any – what do you do with a program like that? I mean, we see that with New Mexico State. Yeah. Uh, we see that with some of the, you know, San Jose State, you know, those kinds of things. Why do they schools. even have football? Oh, right. You reach a point where you go, is it, why, why are we all here? UNLV, why do they have football? Yeah, why do they have football? Why do they have football at UTEP, Greg? The only comparison I can make is they have it at Utah State. Right. For the once every 10 years they beat BYU right. and carry the wagon wheel off the field and all the students storm the field like last Friday. You were still fired up about last <laughs> Friday. That's so, so cool. And I was thinking, if you'd asked me a week ago, why does Utah State have football? I went, yeah, why do they? But this is why football, my new old man theory, can, can as, as I'm easing into the latter half of my 30s, is this. <laughs> football is so cyclical, it almost doesn't matter who your coach is, that if you find a guy who you like, give him a 10-year contract and leave him alone, assuming he doesn't pull a book Richardson, right? Give him a 10-year contract and leave him alone because at Utah State, 10 years ago, they were good and 
they fired a coach, or a coach left, they brought another coach, and they were bad, now they're good again. Is it as simple as just these things come in waves? Yes, 100%. Wow. Oregon State is so bad right now. Yes. Gary Anderson's third year, they only have $16 million. They can't possibly fire him. Right. Let him stay three more years. He'll, he'll and they'll eventually go right. seven and five. And if you look at his predecessor at Oregon State, Mike Riley, Mike Riley was there when they were bad, and then he went to the NFL, and then he came back, and they were bad, and then they got good again, and everybody liked Mike Riley, so they were willing to stick with him in the bad times. I mean, maybe it's as simple as find a guy you like, give him a long-term deal, and let him work. I'm trying to think of anyone in the league who's, who's been that patient over the years, and nobody has been. No, not in the Pac-12. Yeah. I think you could look at smaller conferences. I think you can look at places like Navy and Georgia Tech. Places where you know they're not going to be a prime time game, but you're right. In the Pac-12, there's a rich guy willing to buy out a bad coach uh, just about every year. Oh, you hit him. Right. You hit on it. Mike Price, right. Washington State. They go to the Rose Bowl in like 1996, out of nowhere. Right. 1997. Right. Out Ryan, of nowhere. Ryan Leaf at quarterback. And he'd had maybe six years there, and about four of them were really bad. Right. In the next three years, they go like 111, 210, 39. Right. But they weren't going to get rid of him. And then the fourth year after that, he's back in the Rose Bowl. Jason Gesser takes him back yeah. to the Rose Bowl, and he gets the head coaching job at Ava friggin' Bama out of that. And when I, I was looking that up yesterday, and I yeah. thought, keep Gary Anderson because it's the same Mike Price stuff. He's right. going to eventually be okay. The difference is Mike Price was well-liked, if not beloved. I don't know if Gary and he got Anderson lucky is. on quarterbacks. And he got lucky on quarterbacks, yep. That'll do it for this episode of Greg Hansen's Video Notebook. For Greg Hansen, on, so on your list of like 1 through 11, Pac-12 visiting stadiums, where's Colorado? Boy, on a good day, I, that's probably number one. Really? I, mean, I know you missed it because you... I, I missed it. I missed it. We had a kid. I, I missed know. it. But uh, on a good day, it's, it's by far the most seen. Okay. I, I still go Washington, Stanford. I love Stanford. There's never anybody there. Stanford's 12 for me. <laughs> There's no traffic. <laughs> but it is it is the best place in America to see a base, or a football game. It is. It is. It's really good. And if Arizona Stadium is going to be revamped, you can do a lot worse than what Stanford did. Yeah, it's a good one. Yep. I'm Ryan Finley. We'll see you next time.